Hi, welcome to Make and Mod. Today I'm going to assemble an E3D V6. Uh, if you haven't seen my unboxing, check it out here. Let's get into it. This is the version I'm going to be assembling today. Uh, thanks again to E3D for sending this to me. Links to buy it in the description. Here's what you're going to need. Your E3D and all the parts it came with. A ruler. A 7mm socket or spanner. A 16mm socket or spanner. Now it has to be open-ended like this. You can't use the box end. Uh, a shifter may work. Some end cutters. Some pliers. And a uh, number one Phillips or Posi drive screwdriver. So the side your nozzle goes on is the side that uh, this heater hole is offset to. So take your nozzle and gently thread it in there. Now get it flat on the block and see I'm using little holes that E3D put on their nozzles and I'm going to rotate that hole there which is the middle one um, 180 degrees so half turn out like that then I'm going to take the uh, heat break over here now be careful with this uh, if you kind of twist it or bend it, it, it will break. They're a fairly fragile component. So, wind that in, like so. Then, if you're in the US and you don't have a 16mm spanner, uh, you can use a shifter like I'm using here. Tighten it down onto the block like that. Take your 7mm spanner. You could also use your pliers. Just gently Snug this down. You don't want to be snapping or shearing anything off. So, no brute force here. Okay. Next, uh, take all the bits that came in the thermistor bag. We're going to get our ruler here. It says to measure out two 35mm lengths of this blue sleeving. And uh, I'm just going to use my end cutters to cut it off. There. So there's one. Once I've got one, I'll make the other one the exact same length, which I think is more important. So I'll also cut that one off. There. Holding the thermistor here between my uh, forefinger and thumb, just going to slip these onto the leads, like so. Now, if you definitely don't want these leads uh, slipping up, E3D suggests that you can put on your spare ferrules and kind of crimp them over the sleeving to hold it in place. Personally, I'm not going to do that, but uh, you can if you want to. So I'm going to take the thermistor, five millimeters down from the tip of the glass bead, I'm just going to bend the legs there. Gently, ever so gently, very fragile. Now, uh, this is where I'm going to differ from the guide on the E3D website a little bit, and I'm actually going to crimp this to my wiring first because I don't want to be kind of throwing these leads around. Got it fixed to a point, or else it might fatigue these very thin leads and uh, break them off. So I'm going to try to avoid that. I'm just going to slip these ferrules with the open end over the uh, insulated leads. Okay, and then I'm just going to bend a small loop in the end of these wires. Now I'm going to take the supplied thermistor cable. Now my printer has a breakout board on the uh, extruder, so I'm just going to take oh, about 15 centimeters of it. Just cut it off there. Uh, it's going to strip just about a centimeter of insulation off both leads using my side cutters here. And uh, just twist the wire there to keep the strands together. Now I'm going to Bend these into a loop also. I'm 
Now polarity doesn't matter here, so take each lead and uh, hook it over the other. Do it one at a time. Going to slide this ferrule up over the connection. I'm ensuring that I keep my uh, insulation down as far as possible. I'm going to take my pliers here and I'm going to crimp the connection. Now, if you're watching closely, you might have noticed that I uh, actually forgot to put the heat shrink on, which is a fairly important part. So, I'm just going to take that, snip it in half, like that, like so. Now I'm just going to take a pin here and uh, use it to depick this connector. While it'll probably be fine, I'm not so happy with the supplied heat shrink. I think it's just a little bit too big. So I'm just going to use some pieces of uh, some slightly smaller heat shrink. Should just give it a tighter fit over the connection. So each piece over the connection. I'm going to take a lighter here and then just very lightly pass it over the heat shrink. Let's pop this connector on quickly. Take the uh, screws bag and from that you're going to need the uh, shortest one and the washer. Now uh, make sure you use this washer. If you don't, the screw probably won't hold in the thermistor problem properly which is uh, definitely an issue and uh, also you're probably going to rip the leads off the thermistor if it does hold it in properly so make sure you use that slip that over there now take your heating block and uh, slip the thermistor in now make sure it bottoms out there now, what I'm going to do is use my fingernail with one hand to uh, hold it into the hole where it needs to go. And with the other hand, I'm just going to spread the leads and uh, thread that in. Let's double check with the fingernail again. Okay. Take the long part of the Allen key and just uh, just snug it up. Not too tight though. You don't want to be breaking that thermistor. Now you just want to look down in here and make sure those leads aren't exposed at all and that they're definitely insulated because any shorts there will screw up your readings. So the next step is uh, get your heat sink, pull the fran shroud off. Yeah. Grip the heat shrink, the heat sink between two fingers and wind it onto the heat brake. Now you want to be very careful here. Any kind of uh, abuse will snap that little connection in there. So just hold it, just grab these and just kind of finger tight, just snug it up. See how my fingers are just starting to slip it out? Don't use the spanner here. Take your supplied length of PTFE tubing. You have to use this. I cannot stress enough that if you've got a 1.75 millimeter hot end, whether it's direct or Bowden, you have to use this. Uh, as it, if you don't, the hot end won't work as it should. Now, without using the Bowden coupler, I'm just going to slip it in here, and you can actually feel it go into the heat break. And so I know that's the full distance it needs to go in. I'm just going to mark it here, just so I know that's the. Uh, complete distance that it needs to go in. As I'm using this in a non-Bowden configuration, uh, you do have the option of just taking your end cutters, snipping that off. Now take a razor blade and uh, snip the connection you've made and then I can slip that back in there, the full depth it needs to go in. Okay, and your hot end's ready to use if you want it flush mounted. Now another option you have on direct feed setups is to uh, just take this. Now 
I'm just going to use a raised blade to uh, square off the end. So it's perfectly square. And again, slip it into the uh, heat sink to make sure it's at the full depth, right? You can actually feel it go into the heat break. Now take this Bowden cupper and pop that in. And then again, slide this in. And you really want to feel that go into that heat break. So I'm just pulling up here and pushing down. So I know it's at the full distance it needs to go. Now if you're using a 3mm direct version, it doesn't have any PCFE, so you don't have to worry. If you use a 3mm Bowden version, uh, apparently it just pushes into the top of the heat sink, but it won't push all the way down into that heat break. I'm going to take the long screw, as included, and uh, put it through here. Just tighten that down. Just kind of it's almost there. And I'm going to take the included heater cartridge, slide it in with the wires coming out on the same side as the thermistor is normally best for wire routing, though your circumstances may vary. Uh, try and get it centered in that heat block. I'm going to use my spanner to grab the heat block again, so I'm not tightening against the heat break. I'm just going to tighten that down and see that slowly just starts to close up there. And uh, just going to give it a little bit more pressure. Well, that's quite tight there. That's the tightest I'm going to get that. As you can see, this is ever so slightly kind of warped around that to give good thermal contact. So take the excluded fan, and with this side on like that, and the wires coming out that side as well. You want to mate it onto here and take your included screws, line them through there with the screwdriver and uh, tighten that onto the shroud. With the wires coming out the same side as your thermistor and heater cartridge cables, you want to clip this over the heatsink and just make sure it's right over that bottom fin because that's what really ensures adequate cooling. Uh, you want a the little step up there. Now take your thermistor cables and this fan cable over here but, and the included zip tie. Slip around them, tighten as shown. And you're done. So there you have it. One sexy looking E3D V6. Um, stay tuned to make mod and I'm going to attach the final connectors and modify the firmware to make this work with my Rigidbot 3D printer. See you next time. Don't forget to subscribe!